Hello everyone. Welcome to Fisk Financial Strategy Consultants. Today we are going to study about CFA Level 3 Reading Number 30 LOS 7, where we will study about what is trust and what are the differences between revocable and irrevocable trusts. Trust is a basically a mechanism in which a settler, a grantor who has created that trust make an arrangement which is called trust to transfer the asset to a trustee. Trustee has the duty to manage and pass the benefits of the trust to the beneficiary. So this is a sort of arrangement which a trust has. Now in terms of who is the owner of the trust, in terms of who is taxable, there will be a different cases based on what is the type of trust you are, you have created. So we have to first go on to the classification of trust. First type of trust is called revocable trust in which the settler or the grantor of the trust who has originally transferred the fund has all the right to revoke the trust at any point of time. Uh, that, that defines that he is the owner of the trust and therefore he is liable to pay the taxes on that trust. That makes it the trust more taxable in terms of amount because the ownership is with the settler who is com considerably very wealthy person and that's why the taxes uh, liable to trust is based on the income of the owner and therefore it becomes more taxable. And another issue is that when a creditor comes towards the owner uh, for any kind of uh, debt the owner has had, he can also to uh, come to the trust to take back that money. So the trust become more vulnerable when it is a irrevocable trust. The other type of trust is irrevocable trust. In irrevocable trust, what happens is that the ownership goes to trustee and the trustee becomes liable to pay the taxes. Now two advantages of this is a trust taxes are defined based on the benefits or income of the trust which is uh, uh, which is taxable at a lower, lower rate than the taxes which was supposed to be paid by owner in case of a revocable trust. So that's one issue. The other issue is that in an irrevocable trust the protection from the creditor is also there because the owner the grantor or the settler is not the owner of that trust what happens that both of these arrangements make it differentiating at the time of settler that means uh, on a uh, grantor of the trust and trustee of the trust but for the beneficiary per se this is both the cases gives same benefits they both transfer similar benefits to the beneficiary there is no difference at the beneficiary level there is also a case where a trustee, uh, a settler can become a beneficiary as well. So these are some of the fundamentals which you have to understand about trust and their classifications. Another type of classification is whether the trust is fixed or a discretionary trust. In a fixed trust, what happens is that there is the amount which you have to pay and the time which you have to pay is both defined. For example, there is a case of Mary Maria Valles who is the owner, who is the wealth owner of first generation means whatever wealth she has is created by herself only. Now she want to transfer her assets to her son. So see, uh, but the son is not in the age where he can manage his assets by himself. So she created a trust and defined that at the age of 21, the trustee will start paying his son and then for 10 years he will give make distribution of a specific amount to the son and then after that uh, after the 10 years the total amount whichever is left will be directly given to corners means his son in the discretionary trust it becomes the it, it is based on the knowledge or the talent of the trustee now he decides when and how to pay the amount to the son okay so there is a discretion involved it nothing is fixed here so this is called discretionary trust so these are another type of classification now what is the reason to create trust what are the motivations behind creating a trust first one is control if you give a tax uh, if you give a gift to your son or to anybody the control goes to the beneficiary now that person can do anything with that asset they can sell it 
and use the money in anything which they want and then they come back to basic zero if they get loss in it but in case of trust it is based on trustee or the owner that how they want to manage the asset they just pass on the benefits of those assets the benefits from the trust to the beneficiary it means that the control doesn't shift to the beneficiary the second is asset protection in terms of a creditor come to you as we have known that irrevocable trust provides you a security from creditors it provides security to your trust so that's why to protect your assets sometimes you convert them and send it them into a trust create a trust around them to protect them from any kind of creditors action the third point is tax reduction now again you don't want to pay higher taxes to certain assets you already own and that's why you create trust in their name so that they would be liable for lesser taxes so these are the three main motivations control asset protection and tax reduction this is all what we have to study in this reading please like and comment to let us know how you feel about this video and how we can improve it please subscribe this channel and share this video as much as possible thank you very much